Welcome back to another week of uh, Fall 2024 tier list. I go over the most recent episodes, Sunday being the cutoff. So whatever it's airing today, Arifureta, Watajutsu, nope, not today. Gets cut off. So let's start with, um, how about we get rid of some bad news? So first of all, Dragon Ball Daima. I think the episode was decent. There's nothing wrong with the art, the animation, voice acting soundtrack. It's all good. The pacing, I think, is an issue, but... I think that Daima is not supposed to be Dragon Ball Z, nor Super. I think it's supposed to be a little bit more like OG Dragon Ball, and no one really gives a fuck about that. It's also very apparent by the viewership, so I gave it, honestly, four more episodes than it honestly deserved. It should have been dropped two weeks ago. Goodbye. You voted it without your viewership. I didn't do this. You did this. Another anime? Probably this. Appraisal Isekai? Holy shit, bro. It's just shitting the bed. We're at a new boost level where we're averaging like almost like 1.5 million views per month. The average viewership per video right now for a community series should be around like two to 3,000. Most of these animes can't even break 1,000 views. It's pretty fucking sad. I'm going to, um, I'll, I'll, I'll kind of wait. I know I just posted it today, but the last couple episodes has also just been not hopeful. It, it's honestly like very, very underperforming and I'd much rather put in you know, another community series. It could be another, you know, a fall 2024 anime that we bowled in, like, you know, Spirit Chronicles, or it could be, like, even fucking, what's it called? Apothecary Diaries, which is another project that I want to do. So right now, I'm trying to basically just cleanse this list of undeserving shows because you guys just don't give a fuck about these shows, and I don't really blame you. I don't really blame you. Next, Orb. Probably the most fraudulent show of this season for me. Not as fraudulent as Nokutan, if we're considering fraudulent as the viewership dip from the beginning to what a true viewership is. This is something that my audience didn't even care about. Let's not get that twisted. None of you give a fuck about this. You guys are a bunch of monkeys that only want the dumbest, lowest hanging fruit animes. You can't appreciate art like this, but the Japanese audience could. The Japanese audience could, but even those tourists after the third episode with the big plot twist have all dropped Orb. Because Raphael, the main character that they watch for, is gone. <laughs> it is what it is, so I'm probably gonna drop this. I'm probably gonna drop this. No promises on this one, but I'm probably gonna drop these. Next up, are we dropping anything else? Honestly, Tower of God probably should be dropped too. It's barely hanging on. The most recent episode was uh pretty good. Hopeful, may I say. I don't think I'm going to drop Tower of God. I want to see it through the end, which is sad that this show is hanging on more than these shows. But, I mean, this one got fucked by copyright. This and this is like, nothing is happening. This is a show that no one even cared about from season one, but barely kept it along. But then season two is getting filtered out. And this, another show that nobody gave a fuck about for my audience. But Tower of God, it was decent. They're really um, teasing us with the better animation that happens for like a period of like two second bursts. I'm not completely, you know, uh, compelled by it just yet, but I'm definitely coping. The Mad Dog Yama stuff, Beta stuff, Veal, and Dorsey, Anak, like the gang's all back, and we're doing a fat tournament arc, so I think that we can definitely make it through this season without dropping Tower of God, but it's not going to be performing at all. It's, it's just basically going to be underperforming. It's just gonna be so fucking mid, but hey, I'm investing in the story. Next. We just watched Strange Grief. I think I'll put the episode in good. It's, um... This show is... It was mostly just set up, and... I'm not gonna lie, Cry as a main character, I don't like him at all. I'm gonna be completely honest. He pisses me off more than he makes me laugh. The stupid shit he does, he's, he's not funny to me. You know what's funny? Other people misunderstanding Clark Cry's retardation. That's funny to me. And I get the whole premise of the show. Him being aloof and unaware and doing dumb shit and trying to just not do his job is the essence of the running gag. But it's honestly more frustrating than funny. But there are definitely funny moments when the enemies discovered that, holy shit, he just showed up at an ice cream shop? What the fuck? Wait a minute, how does he know everything about us? That that part is indeed funny, but the main character I'm really 50-50 on. 
Liz too, honestly. Like it, it this is a weird show. I don't know how to describe it. It's a fucking weird show. I, I don't even know if I like the characters. Even Liz is just an annoying fucking bitch that just is so mean to her little sister and guys is like, don't be mean to Liz. She's just a harsh master apprentice. Yeah, shut the fuck up. It's 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 weird. It's still fun though. It's definitely fun. Next up. Villainous Isekai was it's alright. Honestly, I feel like, um, I should put this shit at all in mid. I, I think that my ratings needs to be a little bit more strict. What does good really mean? Was these episodes actually good? It was all right. I feel like there needs to be a distinction. Like, did these are mid. Are they not? Were they not mid? Like, I don't know. This, this two category is kind of... Mid basically means bad according to this, right? Because what does good really mean? Ah, I, I think it, it is just like this. Maybe, I, I, or maybe they should be mid, I don't know. Because I feel like anime is like, I think Ari Furuta was really good, right? I, I put Ari Furuta as good, I had a lot of fun watching it, but I also don't think it was greater peak by any means. I'm not sure. I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm not too sure what the category listing should be. I think I should be more harsh because honestly, most of the episodes that we watch, honestly, if you really wanted to say it, like this would be mid, this would be mid, this would be good, this would be good, this would be peak. Honestly, the most recent episode, I think it's great, not peak. I, I think something like this is a little bit more representable of like what a good show is and what a mid show is overall just like the whole episode throughout the production value just like you know being consistent with like Mao 2099 like do you really think that this shit and this shit and like this is even close I I, I, I don't think so right I, 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 I'm, I'm not really sure how I feel about these ratings maybe I should be a bit more harsh but uh Let's put this down here. Let's put this down here. Let's put this down here. You don't get the blue box site? What blue box site? <laughs> blue box does not perform on anyone's channel relative to their other core content. It's probably like 17 people just fucking spamming and making a brigade to make it seem like blue box is really hyped up. No one really cares, bro. Nougat is very mid. I, I think that, um... These are pretty mid episodes. Let's put him in good for now. Let's let's put him in good for now and try to figure out later. Uh, Villainous is... Oddly enough... Keeping up. It's probably because of... The moments of hostility from Alicia and being a villainous that's very fun and spicy, right? The drama is very fun, so it's keeping up. It's an enjoyable show. Next up, let's talk about Mao 2099. I think Mao 2099, I mean, relative to this, then sh should it be great? I don't fucking know. I, I thought Mao 2099 was a very good episode. May dare I say great episode. It's unfortunate that it does not get the recognition it deserves. I have noticed that it does not really... Honestly, like, uh, this shit is doing better than this. Strange Grief is also the best performing show, by the way, of this. Numbers, I, I know that, and numbers don't really, performance doesn't really represent, like, how good of a show it really is, but a lot of people do enjoy it, and there must be a reason, right? So, 2099, it's not doing as well. I think it may be the whole futuristic demons, Demon Lord concept. I'm enjoying it a lot. There's a lot of relatable themes. Capitalistic hellscape in the future, cyberpunk themes of Demon Lord showing up with his unique way of making contents to, you know, get ahead. The Immortal Furnace plot twist, right? The sacrifice. It was a really great episode. The fight against the robot too. The animation, it wasn't the best I've seen, but goddamn was it good. I think that it deserves a spot here. Next up, Goodbye Dragon Life. What happened? Um, Demon Ant, we're going into the forest. Chris is coming with us. It's just, eh. It's just eh. Is this actually mid? Yeah, I think this is probably mid. Yeah, and I probably should drop 
it too. Speaking of another mid, where is it? This shield. I I I, I think these are definitely mids, right? Th these are definitely mids, right? I think there is a difference in a show like this, even Tower of God. I and and uh, villainous. I don't think is like the most well-made show but it's pretty lightweight and it, it does its job pretty well these shows eh, eh. banish healer is peak mid <laughs> what the fuck does that mean <laughs> now we're gonna have to partition it in different categories low mid 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 and high mid but um banish healer it was a setup episode margulis the goat is gone which was the source of our entertainment a new red hair girl has shown up which reminds me of malty from shield hero uh, there's a little bit more of the mysteries of the show being discovered, but this show is not that enjoyable unless we have those Margulis moments. There was a diet Margulis moment where, you know, uh, not Margulis showed up and said, I apologize on behalf of everybody, even though he looked like he wanted to talk shit in the beginning. It's... Come on, it's mid, right? It, it honestly should be dropped as well. Like, both these shows probably should be dropped but for whatever reason this is kind of barely holding on it's it's like barely holding on so that's that for now let's talk about loner life in another world i think loner life in another world was a good episode i think it's really setting up the stage for next episode to be great or even peak i love the whole intensity of haruka versus that new guy at the end like the way that he said even loners have something to protect i'm like oh god damn pretty cliche but give me kind of goosebumps man it was a very enjoyable episode i think that it should be in good damachi it's time to glaze damachi as usual i put this shit in fucking peak it's actually stupid good how every episode of damachi has been seer who is freya who is horn who is freya who is seer Right? Oh man. A fucking Freya's declaration. I'm not gonna apologize. I'm gonna crash out right now. I'm gonna use my goddess powers and roofie everybody here. I don't care. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> Freya is actually popping off. Belle is stuck in this wonderland hellscape where everyone is schizo and thinks that Belle is not Belle. Belle is part of Freya family. Who the hell are you? And Hestia right now, right, was had Hestia is immune due to her like divinity. This is something that Hermes was talking about. Asfi has also taken, you know, uh, who was it? Asfi and there was one girl that was Ryu, uh, it was Ryu, right? So there's a couple characters: Asfi, Hestia, Ryu, and potentially Hermes, because Hermes says when the time comes, you know, you should give me this letter or something, and there's a game plan to handle this, but I like, I think JC staff is just fucking killing it. They are absolutely killing it with Damachi. And it should be getting way more views. But the fact that, like, it's clearing, like, 3-4k views relative to the other content in my channel. Besides being, like, a very old show with not many people knowing. Like, the community is strong. The community is strong and they're out there. There's a couple survivors left. And I'm glad that we can enjoy Season 5 together. Next up. Blue Lock. You're gonna think I'm fucking crazy. I feel like this shit was really f like, bro. PNG lock, it's just so hype. And 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 this episode, there is nothing to be mad at because there is no soccer play. Meaning they can hide their shitty animation and they can let the hype story carry. And since the art looks good, like the episode was really 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 enjoyable the lineup of i i think it should be like that the lineup of blue lock 11 the plot twist of shido and him even getting like shock collared animal lecture treatment sai showing up taking his ass going to u20 the u20 reveal sai just shitting on the u20 striker shido also just like just they're, they're, they're just fighting it's popping off. It's really hype. It, it, it was it, it was like a really, really hype episode, even though there was no dialogue happening because everything like it's like the stage is being set. 
We're getting to know what the teams are. We're getting really into it. One last training camp to understand what the flow is, even though even like the description of flow was so fun. But uh, we saw the trailer for U20, right? <laughs> we we saw the trailer for U20, right? And uh, I'm not sure. Maybe, maybe, maybe we could slide it and peek. Honestly, it's probably the last time. It's the first and last time that Blue Lock will ever be in peak, right? And if you haven't watched this episode, you have no fucking clue what you're talking about. And if you don't have the same opinion as me, the correct opinion, then you're biased. Yep, that's right. I have the correct opinion. What an oxymoron. But really, I think the most recent episode was probably the first and the last time of like being really, really fun. I don't think Dan da Dan was that peak this episode. It's a chill episode. It's not supposed to be peak. You guys are fucking glazing Dan da Dan's licking its fucking asshole every episode saying it's so peak, it's so peak, it's so peak. It was great. But in terms of like enjoyment, Blue Lock was so fucking fun. It was so, so fun. And talking about Dan da Dan, let's go next. I think that Dan da Dan probably should deserve a spot here. It was meeting a new character, the pink hair girl. Okarun and Momo having more like romance, dynamics. It's great that these two don't fuck around, even though they do fuck around. They constantly just like... It, it, the, the, the banter that they have is great, but the fact that they can honestly talk to each other about their feelings is so refreshing because we watch so much stupid rom-coms where the entire content is these socially inept losers that can't talk about their feelings to expect other people to read their minds and then bullshit happening and then being passive aggressive. Oh my god. I know that Down to Down is not supposed to be one of those shows. That's why it's speed running all those tropes so that it can just, you know, do other things better. But very fun episode. The cat too with Turbo Baba. Very fun. Very cute. I'm like, the cat's finally here. The cat's always like moving, but it's like I've never seen a moving cat before. Oh, Turbo Baba went in it. It's kind of like Dimple from Mob Psycho or like Grim from Seventh Prince, where villain in the beginning gets, you know, domesticated and then gets put into a fucking plushy merch thing. Yeah, pretty much. Next up. Arifureta. I'm going to put it in great. Arifureta was very fun, except for the creepy, grapey part, which is just classic, you know, trashy isekai tropes. Luckily, that shitty prince got immediately executed, I think. I think he got, he got assassinated with the poison spider thing. But other than that, just like the whole dichotomy of Hajime and Koki, the naive idealist white knight Koki, and the pragmatic realist anti-hero Hajime, I love it. More comedy. I think that Hajime is really different this season, and that's why it's even better. Hajime's like personality is way less serious, way more fun and laid back. And I think that's when Arifurata really, really shines. Stop taking yourself so seriously and dark and edgy. Have some fucking fun. Bullshit around. But make sure that the edgy moments are all still there. Arifurata is killing it. I'm really enjoying it. Nah, Notorious Talker. Um, What was it? I think Notorious Talker was basically... I mean, shit, if I can't remember the plot, that's not good. Samurai guy? We went into the slums. There's like a samurai guy. There's like a fight club ring, right? And aside from that... That's it, isn't it? That's straight up it. It's just recruiting a new member, just chill setup. Arama and, you know... You know, Noel, quote unquote, date scene, not really. And then the big bear. Yeah, it was all right. It was all right. The gun scene, bro, I don't even fucking remember. That's how forgettable that scene was. It's all right. If I have to, like, like that, that's a problem. If I have to actively think about what actually fucking happened, and maybe that's not fair because, you know, this is a Monday show. We just watched Tower of God. Maybe I would have forgotten Tower of God it was on Monday, but... I don't really remember much remarkable about Talker last episode other than recruiting new person and maybe some edgy scenes, but it was, it was it was good. It was good. And finally, the last show that we're dropping. Yep. The last show that we're dropping, ReZero. 
Uh, most recent episode? It's probably the best Rezor episode, right? It's probably the most priority episode of Rezor that we had. Capella is just popping off. The just absolute evil Capella, the Archbishop of Lust. Subaru. And like, <laughs> the question being imposed, would you still love me if I was a worm? Her authority is being explained, we're out. But not only that, the shit at the end had me even more hyped because it's like, wait, we're not looping? Wait, 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 the story, this run's gonna keep going? What do you mean, Tomb of Wisdom? What do you mean, Artificial Spirit Marriage? Oh, fuck, it's happening. Reason is really, really popping off. But I'm also very sad that we're pretty much halfway into the end of the season, man. Because... It's not really end of the season because the season has 38 episodes, but what you need to understand is that we're not getting those episodes back to back to back to back. It's eight episodes in, no in October and November, okay? There's three episodes left. And then we wait until February for another eight episodes. Then who knows when the rest of the 38 episodes, you know, in uh, you know, will then air after that, right? So uh, it it's really unfortunate. That ReZero is pretty much almost over, but every episode has been phenomenal. And I'd much rather a schedule like this that allows them to work on this shit. And have ReZero airing for all of 2025, I think it's a better thing. I would much rather ReZero air through all, you know, all of like end of 2024 and all throughout 2025 sporadically, right? Rather than just one season and we forget about ReZero for like another four years, so... It's perfectly fine with me. We're going to be definitely eating so much Rezero in 2025. We just got to be a little bit patient. But I think this is a pretty decent gauge of... Maybe I'm wilding out here. I think I'm wilding out. <laughs> I think I'm fucking wilding out with this one, bro. The more I look at it, the more I realize that, like... No, it should be down here, bro. No, you're crazy. you fucking crazy, dude. Like, many other episodes, I'll probably put it up in, but like... Oh, nah, well, that's crazy. That's unreal. That, that's crazy. That's fucking crazy. The fact that... Blue, nah, 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 nah. It was a great episode. It was a great episode. And I had a peak time watching it. But it's my enjoyment. This is about... It's not like an objective tier list on what, like, art should be, but, like, my personal preference. And according to my personal preference, Blue Lock was fucking just... Killing it, man. I was like so engaged. I was locked on the entire episode. It was so fun for me. I hope you can understand. I like what it should be is here, okay? It probably should be here. But again, understand my logic. I'm crashing out. This is my bias. It probably shouldn't be there, but I'm glazing it just for this one episode, okay? I hope you understand what's going on with Blue Lock. And that's pretty much it. Uh, these two, I'm probably going to check out another episode, respectively. But um, this, this, I think, and this as well. I think that uh, we've had a triple kill. And maybe uh, I'll talk more in depth in the uh, performance review this week, okay? So tomorrow or the day after or something, right? I'll probably make a performance review video. A couple more days have passed and maybe we can collect more data to see how they are performing respectively. Maybe, maybe this survives, right? Maybe this survives, but uh, it's really sad to see just the lack of interest in these shows, despite them being pretty entertaining. But that's it from me. I'll see you next time.